Hi, once again, please welcome Andreas to the stage. All right, uh, good morning again for those of you who haven't seen me before. And also, good morning to the uh, stream. So, welcome to my presentation of Jellyfish, a project of mine to build reproducible documents with uh, Julia and types. So, I'm Andreas, I'm a PhD student, um, and I like types very much. And the reason why I do this is it's basically a typesetting system that takes code and turns it into a PDF document. So, pretty much like LaTeX, but types is uh, fairly new, it was only published last year. It's blazingly fast since it's written in Rust. Uh, so it should take me like a couple seconds max to build a document. And also I found it rather easy to learn, especially compared to LaTeX. Um, so as a PhD student, I use types to build scientific documents. Besides those slides, they're also built in types. Um, and maybe I convince you why this is a good idea, because in types you have like this fairly simple um, syntax, kind of like markdown even for a typical typography, like those titles or emphasis. But at the same time, if you want to do more complex stuff, Types has like a whole built-in scripting language. So whenever you see this hash or pound symbol, this means that now you're like evaluating some code or some function and not just regular content. So you can use, for example, this image function, give it some file name, and then it will include um, a, 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 this image in your, in your document. And then you just head over to the terminal, run the times co types compile command, and you get your nice PDF. But there are a few things that I find a bit annoying about this workflow. So first thing is, when I import this plot and I maybe generate this from some Maki code or so, um, like I have no clue what kind of what kind of code generated this plot after like a month. Maybe I saved it somewhere, but then I don't know where I saved it. And if I want to change something, I probably have to just start from scratch and make the code uh, again. And then also the more attentive you will have might realize that those are not in fact four data points, but only three data points in this plot. So this text is wrong. So maybe. Uh, like I've, I've changed the plot at some point, I forgot to change the text uh, as well. Um, so, yeah, this is not ideal. And what I would prefer to do is the following thing. Instead of, for example, calling this image function, I would much rather uh, have the Julia code directly in my types document. Okay, so I would like to have like this magical JL function where I can give like a code block and then just write down the marquee code that produces the plot. Um, and then get the result. And then since I've defined now my plot inside my document, I can also use that to actually query for the correct length of my um, data array, and I'll actually get the correct number. So how would we go about doing this? Pretty much when Types was published last year, people were like, oh, this is great, but there's one thing we need, which is like shell escape, like in LaTeX. I want to like call the shell uh, command from inside my Types document. And then the types maintainer were like, nope, not going to happen. That's like huge security nightmare. But what you can have is metadata. And metadata means you put this into your type source, but it doesn't produce any visible output. Instead, it makes your document queryable. So for example, you can say, well, let's have this metadata for some number or some key value data. And then you attach a label to that. And given that, you can then, in the command line, uh, next to the types compile, there's also types query can query your document for this specific label, and it will output some JSON of all this data that you put in there as, as, as metadata. And this is pretty helpful because we can use this to extract our code. So uh, let's take this example from the beginning again, where we had like the three data points and so on. At this position, just add in some metadata, where you say, well, this is, this is our code that we want to execute, and give it some ID, and also a label. So if we query for this label, we can get all the um, code that is supposed to be executed. And we can do this in, in Julia, right? Because in Julia, we can just call a, call a command line, uh, uh, like command uh, line, um, read it into a string, we get this JSON, deserialize that using, using, for example, the JSON3 library. And then what we get is like a vector of some dictionaries, we can iterate over this vector, take the code of every item, parse it and evaluate it just using standard Julia stuff, put it into a dictionary, and then in the, in the end, just um, serialize this dictionary again, write it into a file. And now we have a JSON file of all, all our uh, Julia results. And this again, we can now put into types because types has an inbuilt JSON uh, reading function. We can read this file. And then again, in our example, where we have put this metadata for the code, we can put one additional line that now reads the output at this specific ID that we've given before. And then let's say there's some function that uh, displays the output and handles like 
uh, images and text and so on. So, and the nice thing, so this is how you would do this in principle, but of course it's a bit messy maybe, and you don't want to do this all the time yourself. So this is why I built Jellyfish, uh, like JL, like as in the Julia suffix. Um, and you use it in the following way. So you yeah, just use it, uh, like import it as the types package. By the way, nice thing in types, you always give the version names when <laughs> loading packages. I think it's a very sensible idea. Um, and then you also tell it, well, in this JSON file, maybe report Jellyfish, there's, uh, here you can find all the output data that you're supposed to, uh, like, of the, the, the run Julia code. And then you actually have just this magical JL function where you say, well, this is my Julia code. Please run this and put the result in my, in my document. And then there's the types jellyfish Julia package that you can just uh, load from the standard uh, like from the standard registry, and it's more like of an app like a package. So like like Pluto, you just load it and uh, like run one function like this compile compile function on on your document, and then you actually uh, get the result um, as a PDF. So here's the one slide pitch: Why should you use jellyfish? I mean, we have heard about Quarto before, right? And maybe you're wondering now why shouldn't I just use Quarto? And if you have like Julia code and want to put it in a to a document, then probably just use Quarto or Pluto. But if your premise is, I am actually, I want to use types. I like types. I want to build my document in types. But then additionally, I want to add in some Julia. Then this is maybe for you. Uh, you can embed images and text and also some types code. So for example, summary tables that we've just seen just works flawlessly. Just call the table one function and you have your table in there. There's some dependency handling and also other nice features. So Try it out, it's on GitHub, um, and also if you have like any ideas how to improve this and so on or any other inspiration, uh, just get in touch. Thank you very much. We have time just for one question. Anyone from the audience? Hi. So first of all, great talk, really interesting package. Um, I'm wondering. Is there any way to communicate back and forth between the types in Julia documents? So for example, let's say I want some specific figure size, right? And I, I encode that in types somehow. Mm -hmm. Is it possible for to pick up that figure size and tell Julia that you want this figure size and then from there Julia, the Julia end can sort of figure this out? Yeah, so I mean, uh, communication from Julia to types works pretty good. If you want to go from types to Julia, where's the slide with the code? Then you would have, like, you can just put it in this code here, right, that you have to write here. If you have it as some kind of like um, generic types data, there's currently no good way to put this into a Julia, but I, I also thought of this, so this would be probably be nicer, like interpolating this into the code or so, yeah. That's the feature I'm thinking about. Once again, thank you, Andres. A big applause. Thank you very much. <laughs>